dear conference organizers and participants. It is my pleasure to take part in this conference. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity uh, to present the results of my research in cross-cultural universals and differences in American and Russian nicknaming uh, patterns within the Fulbright-funded project, A Cross-Cultural Dictionary of American and Russian Nicknames of Persons. In this presentation, I will focus on name-based nicknames of persons, which circulate in real-life communication as unconventional nominations in the level of micro-society, as opposed to nicknames of celebrities, which are uh, much better documented and studied. To our knowledge, there is only one comparative study which focuses on school students' nicknames in uh, Russia and the USA, conducted in uh, 2011. My major goal is not only to collect, but also to record and uh, preserve nicknames and nickname stories as part of culture-specific discourse in the dictionary format. Nicknames for the Russian sample have been collected since 2003 from students of Novosibirsk schools, institutions of higher education, colleges, vocational training, with the total number of respondents, uh, 813. Uh, nicknames for the American sample have been collected since 2006 in the following way, by means of paper and word format questionnaires distributed among American fellows and educators who visited Novosibirsk, and then by means of anonymous online questionnaires filled out by students and professors and staff of American universities, mainly Eastern Washington University. Uh, this stage of research was conducted last academic year and was sponsored by Fulbright Visiting Scholar Program. Uh, in general, some of the hindering factors and challenges that a researcher faces while collecting nicknames are connected with respondent self-censorship, determined by uh, the unconventional nature of nicknames, which may conflict with privacy issues and political correctness. As a result, respondents may be unwilling to share their own nicknames, to say nothing of other people's nicknames, which are too personal, intimate, or evoke unpleasant memories and can be offensive. That is why we resorted to additional resources in which American contributors willingly share and discuss their real-life nicknames online in thematic forum threads, which are in the public domain. You can see some of the threads on the slide. In this way, American Sample has been complemented by means of continu continuous sampling from these forums, representing different social spheres and groups. Uh, as you can see from this uh, diagram here, um, the Russian sample of data includes eight, uh, 1,859 nicknames, uh, whereas the American sample includes 720 nicknames. We will try to comment on some of the observations concerning major nicknaming patterns in both cultures, being aware that these results are preliminary and the numbers are unequal. Uh, in the course of analysis, the following methods were employed. Distribution of nicknames into categories according to motivation patterns, quantitative comparison of major motivation patterns, and qualitative gaps and overlaps comparative analysis of nicknames based on personal names. When distributing nicknames into motivational types, we stick to the principles suggested by Nigel Varley, Jane Morgan, Christopher O'Neill, Ron Harry, and developed by Kate Poyton. According to these scholars, nicknames fall into two basic motivational types, which can occur in pure or combined form. Nicknames motivated by linguistic factors or name-based nicknames, according to Kate Poyton's terminology. And second, uh, the second group, nicknames motivated by uh, external factors or characterizing nicknames. In our corpus, uh, these two uh, groups of nicknames heavily outnumber minor patterns, which you can also see on the slide. Uh, comparative analysis of the American and Russian samples shows that in both samples, characterizing nicknames prevail over name-based nicknames. In the Russian sample, the two micro, uh, macro patterns are almost equal in proportion, and in the American uh, sample, characterizing nicknames significantly prevail over name-based uh, nicknames. In the present research, we will concentrate on name-based nicknames, when analyzing these motivational type, we will distinguish between aesthetic nicknames, lacking, lacking lexical meaning, meaningful nicknames based on reviving the etymology of, of a proper name, and meaningful nicknames based on associations with the form of a name, rather than its etymology. Uh, the majority of name-based nicknames, as reported by the American subjects, derive from first names, uh, whereas in the American sample, nicknames from the last names are more numerous. 68.7% as compared to 25.5. Uh, now let's look closer to uh, the first uh, name-based pattern, which is uh, ascemic nicknames. Ascemic nicknames are formed by means of 
final clipping, for example, via Vera Ty Tyler, uh, clipping and suffixation, for example, Lenchik Lena, uh, uh, Nasiha Nastya, uh, Zinaidi Shizinaida, or Becker from Rebecca, Matthew Mass for Matthew, and so on. Uh, the next uh, sub pattern here is clipping plus non native suffix. Adding non native suffix um, aims at adding some foreign flavor to a nickname. And then uh, clipping plus redu reduplication, like Mimi for Misha, Jojo for Julian, Jill Jill for Jillian. Uh, both in Russian and American discourse, nicknames originate as corruptions or mispronunciation of uh, uh, names by small children. And uh, you can see the examples on the slide. Toik, Tolik, Momo, Moira, and so on. Um, then uh, the following cases uh, are so far found only in the Russian uh, sample of data. Those are phonetic associations with uh, um, parallel form in a foreign language, like Pedro, Piotr, or phonetic association with a foreign name, which is not a parallel form, for example, Ludwig Ludmila. Uh, another pattern which is found in the, in the Russian uh, sample of data is uh, reversing the spelling of the name, like Yarik Kira, uh, and masculinization of a feminine name, like Vikenti for Vika, Kalyan for Ola. Uh, Patterns which are found only in the American sample of data so far include abbreviation of uh, first names. Uh, the next um, first name based pattern is meaningful nicknames uh, based on reviving etymology of the first name. Uh, so, for example, stone for Peter, fluffy for uh, Julia, Julia, or uh, pebbles for Rocky, olive for Olivia, and so on. Uh, complete overlap is observed in case of uh, the name uh, Regina, uh, when both uh, in Russian and American sample, it is um, it produces the nickname uh, similar nickname um, based on the etymology of this name uh, Queen from Latin. Uh, then next, the third group within first name based patterns is meaningful nicknames are uh, based on false etymology or phonetic and collocational associations. Uh, and the first subgroup here is Fernamasia based on phonetic similarity. Uh, and it represents cases of false etymology, like for example, Ulidka. Um, nickname is based on uh, the first name Lida plus uh, the Appellative ulitka, which means snail, or in the American um, sample, spam, uh, phonetically associated with Samantha, useless uh, for Ulysses, and so on. Uh, the next popular group in both samples is rhyme, uh, and some of the examples are Chipolina for Polina, uh, Sonchi Konchik, Svetka Krivetka, Irun Kamirun. Or bor Borka the Orca, Claire Bear, Neil Neil Banana Peel, Betsy Wetsy, Pearly Whirly, Zachary's Nutcrackers. Um, and uh, one more uh, pattern, which is common in both samples. This is the category um, of collo collocationally derived nicknames. Uh, for example, in uh, the Russian sample, it's uh, the nickname Potop, which uh, has derived from the first name Michael by means of uh, chain associations uh, with the name of uh, a bear in the Russian folklore, which is uh, Mikhail Potapich. And then uh, the uh, patronym was uh, shortened and the nickname Potap emerged. Uh, the same story happens in the American sample with associations uh, for the following names, Ellison, Ellie Cat, J. J. Bird, Bird, Ellison, Ellie, Baba, Ellie, Baba, or Neil, Neil Young, Neil Horse, Crazy Horse, and Horse. Um, then um, one more unique category which is found in the Russian sample is based on false analogy um, between Cyrillic letters which are read as Latin. Thus, the Russian uh, hypocristic name Rita is uh, read as uh, Puma, referring to a famous brand.
And then the next group that we're going to talk about is last name based nicknames. Uh, and in this case, in the Russian uh, sample, they significantly, significantly outnumber those that are used in the that are recorded in the uh, US sample. So within the SME nicknames, we again observe final clippings, uh, final clippings from the names which are derived from first names, uh, final clippings from uh, the last names with non transparent etymology. Uh, next, meaningful nicknames re uh, with revived etymology. Mostly we find examples in the Russian sample. They are very popular there. Um, in the US sample, we uh, so far have found only one example with Highlander from the last name Highland. Uh, then uh, the next uh, sub pattern uh, is connected with meaningful nicknames semantically related to the etymology of the last name by means of hyponymy. Kiryeshka Sukharova. Kiryeshki is a brand of Russian spice right croutons. And so Sukhar is a stale bread or crouton. Thematic relations, Birkut meaning golden eagle, is associated with the meaning of the last name Sakalov, which means eagle. Uh, antonymy, old blood for uh, young blood. Metonymy, I'm called cook because my last name is kitchen. Cookie or cookbook for uh, the person with the last name cook. Uh, then the third group here is meaningful uh, nicknames, which are um, based on phonetic associations and uh, collocational associations with no regard to etymology of last names. Uh, so here we find, um, again, cases of false etymology, for example, Borsh for uh, a person with the last name Barashova, Hercules for a person with the last name Gerasimova, Coca-Cola, uh, for a person with the last na name Kalamusova, and so on. And in the American, some of the examples from the American sample, Rocky for Rock Bauer, Hamster for Hamilton, Hawk, uh, Hodgepodge, Hopscotch, etc., for a person with the last name Hodgeberg, um, Mrs. Dunn for Mrs. Dunn, uh, Abernasty for a person with the last name Abernathy. Um, Colloquial associations uh, is another group of uh, meaningful nicknames with no regard to etymology. And these associations refer to culturally uh, informed objects. While they are more popular in the American sample, in the Russian sample, there are very, very few examples, and they are here on the slide. Um, the name Samarin produces um, the nickname Samara Garadok, which uh, alludes to the famous Russian folk song. Um, the same with the last name Kristaforova, which is associated with Columbus. Um, in American sample, there are more examples associated with famous people like Leroy Kelly or Woody Boyd or Michael Jackson or Rocky and Bullwinkle or Fig Newton. Um, then also uh, within this group, we find uh, examples of last name transformation plus rhyme in the Russian sample. And in the US sample, we find colloquial associations on the linguistic level, like Tom Trash Ken um, type of nickname or Kazarian uh, section, alluding to uh, Caesarian section. Thus, um, on this slide, you can see quantitative data concerning minor name-based patterns, which include culturally specific anthroponymic phenomena as their components. Patronyms in Russian and middle names in English. Uh, so culture specific categories in the American sample include nickname patterns based on a middle name, which is a rare phenomenon in the Russian culture. Uh, formation patterns here are the same as in first name based nicknames, clipping, reduplication, abbreviation. Um, culture specific categories in the Russian sample include nickname patterns based on a patroname, which is the obligatory component of the Russian three part personal name passport formula. First name plus patroname plus last name. In everyday oral discourse, a patroname in post position to the first name is used as a form of address in formal situations. This is a universal way of addressing teachers and professors, doctors, and any adult citizens in formal discourse. Sometimes only a patronym is used to highlight informality and respect at the same time, uh, but no, not among students and teachers. 
That is why nicknames based on patterns involving patronyms are mostly found in school discourse, bearing in connotation. Uh, thus, um, summing up the results of our analysis, um, we may uh, come to the following conclusions. Significant, significant quantitative differences in the ratio of given name-based nicknames to last name-based nicknames in both databases uh, with given name-based nicknames predominant in the American sample and last name-based nicknames prevailing in the Russian sample. Um, these, uh, there can be at least the following reasons to that. Hippocoristic forms are generally not categorized as nicknames in the Russian culture and thus excluded from the analysis. Uh, conventionality and low variability of first names which are in circulation in Russia. Despite the fact that personal name stock includes 3,000 names, only a small proportion of them is actually chosen by parents. Fashion on certain names is also a factor which results in a number of namesakes coexisting in the same community. That is why nickname givers resort to last names as a more varied source. Unlike the Russian first name stock, which is mostly traditional and conventional, American given names are more numerous and varied and include, include at least three times as many nominations as the Russian one. Uh, then, lower frequency, frequency of last name based nicknames in the American sample can be connected with the reasons of privacy and confidentiality. This suggestion is proved by the fact that last names are often omitted in the explanations, and respondents confess that they would rather not share nicknames which disclose a person's identity. Russian respondents are less concerned with this, but they still often omit a last name as well, not last names as well. Uh, secondly, uh, qualitative differences in formation patterns concern the following cases. Middle name-based and patronym-based nicknames as unique culturally specific categories. Uh, concerning giving names, um, in the Russian sample, many nicknames copy foreign names, which is one of the ways to make nicknames more impressive. Such uh, cases are more numerous in the Russian sample. Then abbreviations of first or last name initials are more frequent in the American sample. In the Russian sample, they are found mostly within following, the following patterns, name plus patronym or name plus patronym to its last name. Next, uh, differences in alphabets can result in unique nicknames in Russian, which uh, when Cyrillic letters are read as Latin, the case of uh, Rita Puma. Uh, in the American sample, collocational nicknames of the trash can type are more productive than in uh, Russian due to systematic differences between Russian and English. In Russian, last names mostly have special suffixes, which distinguish them from appellatives and make them incompatible with anything but first and patronymic names. Nevertheless, despite the aforementioned differences, the following similarities are found. In both samples, nicknames of all subcategories form the opposition of asemic versus meaningful nominations, which are built according to the same coinage patterns. In the group of given name-based nicknames, asemic and meaningful nominations based on false etymology are equally frequent, unlike those reviving correct etymology. In the group of last uh, name-based nicknames, there is a strong tendency to create meaningful nominations based on phonetic associations and violating true etymology of last names. To sum up, it should be highlighted that gaps in formation patterns pointed out in the course of analysis are viewed as potential slots which can be filled out in the process of further expansion of databases. Thank you very much for your attention. Here you can see literature and internet resources. Uh, and I will be happy to hear your questions and comments. Um, and this is the finding about low diversity of first names here. This finding um, will, will, will make me just keep thinking about it. Uh, because actually I was, when I found that, I was asking, um, well, some of my friends if they really uh, create more nicknames from uh, last names rather than from first names. And they said, yes, because, well, our, uh, our first names are very few. And if I open my, the list of register in, uh, of my students, there are a lot of like popular names that don't, we have to resort to some extra dis well um, some extra ways of to distinguish them so probably that can be 
uh, one of the strong factors here. I'm guessing there is one. There's one more from Professor yeah. Cleveland Kent Evans. There is research in the United States of America which shows that the percentage of professional athletes who are known by nicknames is much lower than that it was a century ago. Do you know if there has been any such change in Russia over the years? Yes, thank you very much for, for this uh, interesting question. Well, for professional athletes belong to nicknames of professional athletes belong to the category of nicknames of celebrities. And um, well, uh, there's Chris Berman, who is very famous uh, in coining uh, these trash can type nicknames for professional um, athletes and uh, baseball players, I think. Um, and well, yes, actually, uh, some of the papers on uh, American nicknames of celebrities uh, note that uh, nicknames of celebrities nowadays have become less inventive, less creative than they used to be. Um, well, uh, as I'm not a follower of sports events here, well, uh, it's difficult for me to say, but I think that um, many athletes, many Russian athletes just ad uh, adopted uh, this um, fashion of nicknames, you know, like brand names, because they start like uh, serving as brand names and many hockey players play uh, in the US hockey leagues and Canadian hockey leagues. And so this, this kind of became fashionable and I think this uh, this trend came from uh, from from the US uh, well part of marketing maybe yes absolutely thank you Anna uh, any more question there's one there oh, we still have three minutes so I have a question right, for yes. you uh, you mentioned that Russian names are many uh, last name based, the nicknames, I mean, okay. However, the names in the United States is usually first name based. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about the cultural differences behind the, behind that phenomena? Well, of course, um, I should take into account the fact that the numbers are unequal. And so probably if, um, some more um, e examples will be added to the American sample, then these figures will change. Um, well, but nevertheless, as I tried to explain this, um, I think I, I, well, judging by the number of um, first, well, given names in, uh, in, the, U in the US corpus, they outnumber the, the Russian ones and they are more varied. And from my own experience, I can say that. Um, uh, I would say there are fewer maybe namesakes. Of course, they, it's unavoidable to have a namesake. But anyway, uh, I feel like um, American parents try to be more creative in this uh, than the Russian ones. However, uh, in, in Russia, it also happens and many uh, parents try to give uh, their children like some innovative uh, names, but they should be compatible with a patronymic. And sometimes the patronymic sounds traditional and the first name sounds, you know, quite um, quite posh and it doesn't match the, uh, the patronymic and it creates a humorous, just a, you know, a humorous effect. But anyway, some of the parents uh, do that here. Um, well, and another thing is, as I said, uh, well, like political correctness, um, maybe, well, uh, a name is mo a more general thing in comparison with the last name. The last name identifies a person uh, more specifically. And so it's just, I think, a matter of, um, uh, you know, uh, identification and privacy matters. Well. Okay, so thank you very much. Yeah. I see that the there is question one from Alexa Prince. Is name diversity in Russia increasing? Um, 
On the one hand, in general, the number of uh, nicknames in uh, Russia since uh, 2000 has been decreasing uh, in terms of the number. Uh, I started collecting nicknames like 23 years ago, and actually there's a decrease in the number of uh, nicknames, and I think it is connected with uh, the dynamics in, um, in school discourse. The students are more, you know, uh, focused on communication via their uh, cell phones uh, and so on. Well, uh, and so that, that's, that's the dy dynamics, that's the tendency here. Uh, on the other hand, um, the, the patterns of nicknames have um, become wider because uh, due, again, due to technology, some, uh, some new, absolutely new types of nicknames have emerged. Like for example, uh, nicknames based on or coming from uh, the sphere of internet when the person um, so other people start calling a person by uh, the person's username. And another interesting example is when we uh, type in our mobile phones the name of the person. So there's a mistake and uh, the person is recorded in uh, our address book uh, with a spelling mistake. And this sounds funny and this produces um, this special new type of nicknames as well which is a variation of uh, corruption of uh, personal names anyway, but still. So new technologies bring some new types of nicknames to the, to the, to the, uh, to the corpus. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a really, very wonderful presentation and very wonderful discussions. Thank you very much.